Hello folks, welcome back to WIF Facts and for today's video we'll talk about amazing animals who can regenerate parts of their body. Have you ever wished you could grow a new limb like a lizard, or regenerate a lost body part like a superhero? Well, as it turns out, there are some creatures that have this incredible superpower. What are we waiting for? Let's go and meet them. First on our list are the salamanders. Salamanders are like the superhero of the amphibian world. They've got this lizard-like appearance, with slender bodies, short limbs, blunt snouts, and a tail that's present in both adults and larvae. But that's not even the coolest part. They can regenerate lost limbs and other damaged parts of their bodies like it's just another day at the office. I mean, they can even regrow their tails if they get caught by a predator and need to make a quick escape. And get this, within just a few weeks of losing a limb, they can perfectly reform the missing structure. It's like they have a secret superpower that we humans can only dream of. Scientists have been studying these amphibian wizards for years, trying to figure out how they do it. They've found that after a limb is lost, cells come together to form a clump called a blastema. The blastema might look undifferentiated, but cells from just beneath the surface of the skin are able to develop into any type of cell needed to regrow the missing part, like new skin, muscle, or cartilage. It's like they have a whole team of specialized cells working together to regenerate their bodies. And get this, researchers are hoping to reverse engineer these processes for human medical applications, like treating brain and spinal cord injuries or reducing scarring during surgery recovery. They've even been genetically engineering axolotls to track the cell division process under the microscope. It's like we're trying to borrow some of that salamander magic for ourselves. Next are axolotls which are a type of salamander. Move over, Wolverine. The axolotl is the new regeneration superhero in town. These slimy creatures are the subject of extensive scientific research due to their amazing ability to regrow limbs, gills, and even parts of their eyes and brains. Unlike humans, axolotls don't heal by scarring and can regenerate entire lost appendages in just a few months. They can even accept transplants from other individuals and restore these alien organs to full functionality. And if that wasn't impressive enough, some axolotls have been known to repair a damaged limb while also regenerating an additional one resulting in an extra appendage that makes them the envy of pet owners everywhere. Sure, the axolotl may lose some of its regeneration powers as it matures, but it's still the perfect model for studying limb development in vertebrates. Researchers are constantly discovering new insights into how the axolotl's unique internal system regulates macrophage levels and suppresses inflammation to prevent scarring and promote proper healing. With cutting-edge technologies like germline modification and transgenesis, Scientists can now even live image the regenerative processes that occur in axolotls. So, let's give it up for the axolotl, the ultimate regeneration champion. Next are the geckos. Geckos, like many other lizards, have the ability to shed their tails in defense, a process called autotomy. This allows them to escape from predators as the predator attacks the wriggling tail. Unlike mammals. The lizard tail includes a spinal cord and many lizards can detach a portion of their tail to avoid a predator and then regenerate a new one. A recent study has found that the spinal cord of the tail contains a large number of stem cells and proteins known to support stem cell growth. Geckos are able to regrow a new tail within 30 days, which is faster than any other type of lizard. The severed tail continues to wiggle, distracting the predator long enough for the reptile to escape. A simulation is done by pinching the gecko's tail causing the tail to drop. The site of the tail loss begins to repair itself, leading to new tissue formation and a new spinal cord. The researchers discovered that the spinal cord houses a special type of stem cell known as the radial glia, which makes different proteins and begins proliferating more in response to the injury. Ultimately, they make a brand new spinal cord. Once the injury is healed and the spinal cord is restored, the cells return to a resting state. Next are the chameleons. Chameleons are quite multi-talented creatures. Not only can they change colors like a boss, but they can also regrow their limbs like a superhero. These little fellas can grow back their tails, limbs, and even jaws. Talk about a body transformation. Their secret weapon? Pluripotent stem cells help them grow back the complex tissues and muscular structures that make up their body parts. And if that wasn't impressive enough, they can also heal their nerves and skin while regenerating their lost limbs. Next are deers. Deer are pretty cool creatures, they can regrow their antlers every year, 
just like clockwork, male deer, or bucks, are the ones who do this, and it's all part of their fancy mating ritual. It's like they're saying, look at me, I can grow antlers, I must be a great catch. The antlers start growing in the spring, and by late summer or early fall, they're fully grown and covered in velvet, which sounds like a fancy coat made of blood and nutrients. But here's the catch, once the mating season is over, the bucks shed their antlers like they're dropping their mic after a great performance. Then they just grow them back all over again. It's like a never-ending cycle of antler regrowth and shedding, all thanks to the hormones testosterone and estrogen. And get this, if a deer loses their antlers in a fight, or because it got shot at, yikes, it can still regrow them. They're like the wolverine of the animal kingdom but with antlers instead of claws. Their secret weapon? A diet packed with calcium and phosphorus, which they get from munching on grass, insects, berries, nuts, and whatever else they can find. It turns out that genetics also play a role in how quickly deer can regrow their antlers. If their dad had big antlers, they're likely to have big antlers too, and regrow them faster. It's like they have a secret antler growing formula that they pass down from generation to generation. Next are alligators. Alligators are also reptiles but it was unclear whether they had the ability to regenerate their tails, which can be up to 15 feet long and weigh up to 1,000 pounds. However, a recent discovery shows that young American alligators can regrow their tails up to 9 inches, or around 18% of their body length. The researchers found that alligator tails regrow cartilage, connective tissue, and skin instead of bone and skeletal muscle. This ability is greater than that of mammals, which mostly regrow nerves, skin, and blood vessels, but less than lizards which can sprout nearly perfect tails with skeletal muscle. The researchers believe that regrowing a tail is energetically expensive and can take away from other essential developmental processes. However, for young alligators, regrowing a lost tail can have significant fitness benefits since they need a tail to elude predators and survive their most vulnerable years. This study also raises questions about how regeneration evolved in reptiles and has implications for developing regenerative therapies for humans. Next are spiders. Spiders are basically living tanks, with their bodies encased in a super tough exoskeleton, but as they grow, they need to ditch their old armor to make room for a bigger one. This process is called an instar, and a spider can go through more than 20 of these before becoming a full-fledged adult. But shedding their skin isn't just for looks, it also allows spiders to regenerate lost body parts. For instance, if a spider loses a leg, it can grow a new one as long as it still has at least one more molt left. However, the new leg is often a bit scrawnier and shorter than the original, and it might take a couple of molts before it's back to its full glory. But spiders don't stop at legs, they can also regrow other important bits like pedipalps, mouth parts, and silk spinners. Next are Kemp's spiny mouse. If you thought shedding skin was just for snakes and lizards, think again. The spiny mouse is one of the coolest mammals out there because it too can shed its skin. Not only that, but it can completely regenerate any damaged tissue like it's no big deal, hair follicles, skin, sweat glands, fur, and even cartilage. Talk about a handy trick. To achieve this magical feat, spiny mice form clusters of cells called blastema all over their exposed flesh which helps them grow new skin with fur and without any scarring. And let's just say that when scientists try to grab these mice, they often end up with just a handful of skin in their hands. Yep, these little critters are so good at shedding their skin that they use it like a banana peel. And they're the only mammals known to do so. Next are the cockroaches. Cockroaches are the true survivors, rumored to outlast even a nuclear war. But let's not get ahead of ourselves, they're not indestructible. While they can regrow their limbs, they can't grow a new head. Sorry, cockroaches, looks like you'll have to keep your noggin attached. Baby roaches, or nymphs, are the real MVPs when it comes to regeneration. They can regenerate tissues following major injuries, but even they have their limits. Extensive damage to tissues and muscles can leave cockroaches unable to regenerate. But don't worry, if your favorite cockroach loses a limb, it can grow back just as strong as the original. It will take a few molts but it's worth it to have your six-legged friend back in action. And it's all thanks to their complex DNA, which gives them advantages like limb regeneration and the ability to adapt and survive. Next are starfish. 
Starfish are the ultimate escape artists, capable of shedding limbs at will to evade predators. But don't worry, they can grow back those missing arms with time. Some starfish can even regrow an entire new limb from a single arm, while others need a bit of help from the central disc. It's like a DIY project, but for your body. Just be patient, because regrowth can take months or even years. And let's not forget the risk of infection during those early stages, starfish are basically walking petri dishes. But fear not, a separated limb can live off stored nutrients until it regenerates a disc and mouth. Because who needs food when you can just feed off your own body? All in all, starfish are pretty amazing creatures, even if they're a little too good at breaking themselves apart. Next are zebrafish. Zebrafish have amazing regenerative abilities. They can even regrow their heart and lateral line hair cells in their early stages, thanks to some fancy signaling pathways like Notch and WNT. And if they suffer an injury to their photoreceptor cells or retinal neurons, they can call on their trusty sidekick, Muller Glia to help them regenerate. Scientists have been so impressed with the zebrafish's abilities that they've been tinkering with their genes to create transgenic strains. And they've even found that zebrafish use a special protein called fibroblast growth factor to ensure that their spinal cords heal without any unsightly scarring. Next are jellyfish specifically the Turritopsis dornii. Have you heard of the immortal jellyfish, Turritopsis dornii? It's the world's most indestructible creature, move over, cockroaches. This tiny jellyfish is biologically immortal and can revert back to its youthful, colonial stage after reaching sexual maturity. It's like Benjamin Button, but for jellyfish. These jellyfish are masters of regeneration. When they die, they transform into polyps that attach to their decaying bodies. From these polyps, new jellyfish burst forth, ready to take on the world. Talk about being a self-made creature. Scientists are fascinated by these jellyfish and are studying their ability to defy the aging process. Who knows, maybe we'll all be bathing in jellyfish extract in the future to stay young forever. The possibilities are endless. Next are the crayfish. Move over lobsters, there's a new crustacean in town with some serious superhero powers, the crayfish. These little guys may look like shrimps, but they've got something in common with their big, bad lobster cousins the ability to regenerate lost limbs. That's right, they're basically the Deadpool of the freshwater world. Crayfish are decapods, which means they've got 10 legs, including some sweet antennae for navigating in the dark. And if your pet crayfish loses a limb in a freak accident or a really intense game of underwater laser tag, fear not. They've got the power to regrow it in a few months to a year, depending on their age. It's like a mini Marvel movie playing out in your aquarium. Of course, the process of regeneration is no joke. Crayfish have to shed their exoskeletons and molt to heal, which can take some time. So don't be surprised if your crayfish is looking a little less impressive in the claw department for a while. But hey, at least they're still alive and kicking. And get this. Crayfish are so confident in their regenerative abilities that they'll sometimes voluntarily sacrifice a limb if it means saving their own shell. It's like they're saying, I am crayfish, hear me roar. Or maybe just, I am crayfish, watch me regrow. Either way, these little guys are not to be underestimated. Next are the catfish. Did you know that catfish have whiskers too? Yep, those fancy looking things are actually called barbels in scientific terms. And the reason they're called catfish? Well, it's because those barbels bear a striking resemblance to a feline's whiskers. Mind blown, right? But here's the catch. Those precious barbels can get injured and cut short. So, the big question is, can they grow back? The good news is that catfish are pretty resilient creatures and can regrow their barbels if they get snipped or fall off. But here's the thing, whether they'll grow back or not depends on a few factors, like water quality, fish age, and nutrition. So, it's like a game of chance. Here's the deal, if you want to increase the chances of regrowth, you need to provide your catfish with the right environment and grub. Trust me, it's like hair regrowth for fish. Just remember that the barbels won't grow back if they're broken off too close to the nerve endings. Ouch! That would be like you losing a finger. So, give them time, be patient, and maybe throw in some motivational fishy speeches to cheer them on. Next are the sea cucumbers. Sea cucumbers are like the odd ones out in their family, the echinoderms. They don't have cool shells to protect themselves like their cousins but they have something better, they can shoot their guts out at predators. 
However, that means they have to rebuild their organs, which is pretty impressive. Scientists at the Chinese Academy of Sciences Institute of Oceanology wanted to know how they pull off this party trick. So, they sequenced 30,000 genes of the Japanese sea cucumber, which is like 92% of its whole genome. They found out that sea cucumbers diverged from other echinoderms around 479 million years ago and have fewer genes for making their exoskeletons, but they do have some extra genes that might be responsible for their organ regrowth. Who knows, maybe one day we'll be able to grow our own organs too. Next are sea squirt. Scientists have discovered that the humble sea squirt has the ability to regenerate its entire body from tiny blood vessel fragments. The regeneration process can produce an adult sea squirt in as little as a week and resembles the early stages of embryonic development. While the ability to regenerate a whole body from a fragment is typically restricted to less complex invertebrates, the sea squirt botryloids Lia Chi has proven to be capable of massive regeneration, despite being a more complex invertebrate. Each colony of sea squirts is composed of thousands of genetically identical individuals connected by a network of blood vessels. By removing fragments of blood vessels from the colonies and placing them on microscope slides for investigation, the scientists found that 80 out of 95 fragments regenerated an entire functional adult within one to three weeks. The sea squirts did not employ blastemas, which are tissue that forms right at the place where regeneration of an organ or body is needed. Instead, regeneration began from dozens of tiny compartments loaded with stem cells, which the researchers dubbed regeneration niches. The regeneration niches helped form a hollow sphere that folded over and over again, developing chambers and organs eventually resulting in adults capable of sexual reproduction. Next are the sea slugs. So, imagine this, a sea slug's head is just casually circling its detached body in a tank. Talk about bizarre behavior. The scientist who stumbled upon this thought the slug was a goner, but instead of dying, it began regenerating an entirely new body. The slug was like, hey, I don't need this old body anymore, time for an upgrade. After three weeks, it had replaced 80% of its body, including all the important organs. The new body was an exact replica of the old one, which was still chilling and living its best life. But why would a slug go through all this trouble? Well, the researchers think it might be a way to get rid of internal parasites or to escape predators. And the younger slugs are the ones who can pull off this trick because they're the only ones with enough energy to regenerate. How do they get that energy, you ask? By stealing chloroplasts from the algae they eat and using them to photosynthesize. It's like they're tiny little green sea monsters. Next are the flatworms. Flatworms and sea slugs are often mistaken for one another as they're both flat and brightly colored. It's just that flatworms are really really flat, tend to move faster, don't have real tentacles on their heads, and also don't have flowery gills on their backs. Flatworms specifically the planarians are well known for their remarkable ability to regenerate any part of their body. After amputation, a feat made possible by a vast number of pluripotent stem cells. Scientists have developed a new method to analyze the composition of planarian stem cells and the turnover of their proteins, with the goal of understanding the mechanisms that enable these creatures to maintain their stem cell pool across generations. As a result of their research, they have identified a protein that is not only necessary for maintaining the stem cell population in planarians, but that may also be active in the pluripotent stem cells of mammals. Next are the sharks. It is unexpected, but sharks have the ability to renew their teeth, though they lack the capacity to regenerate their organs or other bodily structures like some of the other animals mentioned in this list. Throughout their lifetime, sharks can lose at least 30,000 teeth, but each one can regrow in a matter of days to months, enabling a single shark to regenerate its teeth up to 50 times. If researchers can uncover the mechanism behind this regenerative process, it could lead to significant advancements in the field of dentistry. Next are the hydra. Hydra is a type of small freshwater organism belonging to the phylum Cnidaria and class Hydrozoa. The genus was named after the hydra a mythical creature defeated by Heracles that could regenerate its many heads if they were cut off. Much like the organism's regenerative ability, scientists are particularly interested in Hydra because they seem to be immortal and do not age. The organism has two main structures, the head and the foot. When a Hydra is cut in half, each half can regenerate into a new Hydra, 
with the head growing a new foot and the foot growing a new head. Even if the hydra is sliced into multiple pieces, the middle slices can still form a head and a foot. This regeneration occurs without cell division and is explained by the presence of positional value gradients. Hydras can also reproduce through budding, with a new individual forming around two-thirds down the body axis. Additionally, they can regenerate from tissue pieces or dissociated single cells, which then form two epithelial cell layers and undergo a patterning process to form heads and feet. Next are the Mexican tetra. Did you know that the Mexican tetra has a superpower? It can actually regenerate its own heart tissue after a major injury. But hold on, it gets even crazier. It turns out that the regenerative power depends on the morphotype, with some capable of it and others not so much. In a lab study, scientists found that the river morphotype could repair its heart, while the cave morphotype just generated scar tissue. Who knew fish could be so picky about their heart regeneration abilities? The researchers found that two specific genes, ERK10 and Kvolin, were responsible for the different response patterns. And get this, the ERK10 gene has regenerative powers in other species too, like the zebrafish. But by inhibiting the expression of these genes, the Mexican tetra loses its regenerative abilities. So basically, if you want to keep your regenerative powers intact, don't mess with ERK10 and Kvolin. But the fun doesn't stop there. Reproductive crosses between the river and cave morphotypes revealed that regenerative abilities are inheritable. So, this gene could be the key to heart repair not just for fish but also for mice and humans. Looks like the Mexican tetra might just have something to teach us about healing our hearts. Next are the conch. Conch, those slow-moving, herbivorous, marine gastropods, have large and sophisticated camera-type eyes located at the ends of long, flexible stalks. Impressively, conches possess an incredible ability to regenerate their eye tissue. They can regrow a lost eye within just a few weeks, much faster than other gastropods. Not only can conches regenerate their eyes, but they also have the ability to produce pearls in various colors, such as white, brown, orange, and pink. Queen conches usually live up to 7 years, but some species can live for as long as 20 to 30 years. As conches age, their shells become thicker, so the thickness of a conch's shell is a good indicator of its age. While conches are often known for the beautiful sounds of their empty shells, they also have interesting features while still inside their shells. Next are tadpoles. If a tadpole happens to lose its tail before it becomes tailless by nature, it has the superpower to regrow it like it never lost it. As with most creatures, younger frogs and tadpoles have more stem cells compared to older ones. The tadpole experiences a metamorphosis, and it goes through an array of changes during its early stages of life. All the stem cells in the tadpole's body go into overdrive, changing and molding its shape and abilities in a hurry. In their skin, they have a type of stem cell called regeneration organizing cells. These cells are like the Gandalf of the tadpole world, organizing and directing the regeneration process. It's incredible how tadpoles show us the power of stem cells and their potential to bring about massive changes in an organism's body. Next are the octopus. Octopuses are not only one of the smartest creatures on the planet, but they're also quite the master of regeneration. When their limbs are amputated, they don't just sit there and sulk like a human would. Instead, they stay active for about an hour, even trying to feed themselves with the lost limb. However, it takes much longer for an octopus to regrow its limb than for a lizard to regrow its tail. A fully functional tentacle can take up to 100 days to regrow, but the wait is worth it, as the regenerated tentacle is often even better than the original. No wonder they say that an octopus never loses a fight, it just grows a new arm and comes back swinging. Last on our list are human fingertips. Although other species have demonstrated impressive regenerative abilities, humans are still at an early stage in the field. Nonetheless, there have been some successes in regenerating fingertips, particularly in children. Research on mice has shown that they can regrow their claws successfully if a small portion remains after amputation. Furthermore, scientists have recently discovered a connection between nail stem cells and human fingernails which may explain why fingertips have a better chance of regrowing if some of the nail or cuticle base remains intact. Like hair, fingernails continue to grow even in adulthood, well, at least, we hope they do, requiring a steady supply of specialized cells to form their sturdy structures. With these findings, who knows, maybe we're already on the verge of regenerating limbs right at our fingertips. And that's it for today's video. Thank you for watching, and I'll see you in the next one.